Hey everyone, since the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus comes with two USB-C 4.0 ports, I wanted to see how well it works with my cheap $100 Wikingu eGPU dock, which I've obtained from AliExpress a while ago for 100 bucks. A link will be in the description if you're interested. And for today's test, I paired that with an RTX 4070 as well as an RTX 3060 and compared it with the performance of when I installed them into my Ryzen 7 7700X desktop as well as with the pure performance of the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus in a few games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. For this test, I plugged in the monitor directly into the discrete external GPUs and not via a docking station, because by plugging it into the GPUs directly you get quite a lot more performance. The MSI Claw was set to its highest 30W mode for all of today's test, of course. So let's jump right into the benchmarks to find out if this cheap eGPU is worth it with the MSI Claw 8 AI+. Today's video is brought to you by Aniba. You want really cheap games and you're tired of waiting for the next big sale just to grab your favorite game? Yeah, same here. That's why I've personally been using Iniba for years now and they've never let me down. It's a massive online marketplace where you can get legit game keys, software licenses and gift cards for way less than you'd pay in the official stores. We're talking Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo and more, it's all there. You just pick your platform, check out the low prices and get an instant delivery of your keys. No more FOMO, no more waiting for Black Friday or Steam sales. Whether you're looking for that one game everyone's talking about or you just need a cheap Xbox Game Pass subscription, Aniba's got you covered. And it's all digital, super fast and super simple with in my opinion the best user experience of all key shops. So next time you're about to overpay, maybe just don't? Check out Aniba instead today via my links in the description. For the first game today I was using the integrated benchmark of Black Myth Wukong with high settings and XESS set to 70% resolution scaling. While these settings already make the game unplayable at 1080p for the MSI Claw itself, with only 25 FPS, we are already getting a massive boost of almost 100% when using the RTX 3060 via the eGPU. And in Wukong that actually scales pretty well for this game, as with the RTX 3060 plugged directly into my desktop, it's only gaining another 30%, even at 1080p, which isn't a lot compared to the other games, as you'll see soon. Also here the RTX 4070 in the eGPU is able to perform 69% better than the 3060, while in my desktop the difference was 70%, so that is pretty close actually. At 1440p, the claw now really shows a slideshow with only 18 FPS on average, while the eGPU with the RTX 3060 still remains somewhat playable with 39 FPS on average and 1% lows of 29 FPS, and the difference to the 3060 in my desktops shrinks to 26%. While the RTX 4070 really kinda makes sense here, even via this bottlenecked cheap eGPU with an average of 69 FPS. And with 69 FPS frame generation by 2 actually does make some sense and could further boost the FPS. Now at 4K the claw is almost put to sleep with only 10 FPS on average at high settings and 70% resolution scaling in Wukong, but that is of course a harsh test for an integrated GPU. Now even the 3060 is below 30 FPS when used in the eGPU, but of course that's not really a 4K card in the first place. Well, the difference to it when used in my desktop is now only a measly 4 FPS or 15%. The 4070 almost gets twice as much FPS here when used in the eGPU via the claw and it's pretty close to its desktop performance with a difference of only 20%. So as seen in one of my videos from last year, eGPUs do make some more sense at higher resolutions for sure. Assassin's Creed Shadows is a really hardware demanding piece of sh software. Very hard on the GPU. I ran the integrated benchmark with low settings and XCSS on performance. Here the pure claw without the eGPU is already performing below 30 FPS on average at 1080p, while the 3060 only helped a bit with just 10 FPS more on average, which equals around 34%. Even the RTX 4070 wasn't able to push the game above 60 FPS when used in the eGPU, despite it running at only 1080p with XCSS on performance. Quite disappointing. 
Here the difference for my RTX 4070 in my desktop was quite big compared to the eGPU pairing with 76% more FPS on average. Huge bottleneck in that case. However, interestingly, at 1440p, the FPS haven't been significantly lower in all setups. Only 3 FPS less for the eGPU combos. So 1080p wouldn't make any sense here really, despite if you're using the MSI Claw without an eGPU. While even with this high resolution, the difference was still a very high 70% for the RTX 4070 when used in my desktop PC compared to when it was used in the eGPU with the Claw. While that difference was only 42% for the RTX 3060. And even at 4K, the performance hit wasn't as high as I've expected initially. The 4070 still manages over 60 FPS in the desktop, while the eGPU combos only lost another around 7 FPS. Barely playable with the RTX 3060 now, and the 4070 was achieving 52% more FPS compared to that with 44 on average and 38 for the 1% lows. However, this is probably the hardest game to run right now and while the frame times are really good and it runs stable, the optimization in terms of pure average FPS performance is absolutely horrible. For Cyberpunk 2077, I was once more using the integrated benchmark, this time with high settings and XCSS set to performance, no frame generation activated. Here the RTX 3060 and the RTX 4070 performed way better in the desktop at 1080p compared to them being installed in the eGPU. You can see they both actually perform almost the same that way with 70 and 74 FPS on average, I mean in the eGPU. So there's definitely a clear bottleneck and even a 4090 would probably not perform any better. The 3060 with the eGPU was 39% faster than the pure MSI Claw and another 76% faster when installed in my desktop. Once more, at 1440p, the difference between the eGPU and the desktop actually shrinks a bit. Now, the 3060 was only 52% faster in the desktop compared to the 76% at 1080p. And it also still provided playable 60 FPS in the eGPU compared to the now only 40 FPS on the Pure Claw, which is now an improvement of 53% instead of only 39%. But still installed into the desktop, both cards performed a lot better. And at 4K the results actually flipped and now the RTX 4070 in the eGPU dock was quite a bit faster than the RTX 3060 in my desktop PC. And that even with still playable 54 FPS at 4K. But in my desktop it was still another 52% faster compared to that, so even here definitely bottlenecked a quite by quite a lot. And at 4K, the MSI Claw obviously doesn't provide enough FPS anymore with only 23 FPS on average, even with XCSS on performance, which is basically 1080p native. Keep in mind that the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus is still quite new uh, when I was doing these benchmarks, so future BIOS and driver updates could help again. And last but not least, I also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider in DirectX 12 mode at high settings without any upscaling. Basically, the same outcome all over again. Especially at 1080p, the eGPU with the MSI Claw is a lot slower compared to the desktop PC, while it is at the same time providing a much better performance than the Pure Claw 8 AI+. 89% more FPS with the RTX 3060 in the dock and 144% F uh, percent more with the RTX 4070. While that one performed another 118% better in the desktop PC. At 1440p, once more the results flipped a bit and now the RTX 4070 in the eGPU dock is able to perform a bit better than the RTX 3060 in my desktop PC. While the Pure Claw now already performs significantly worse than all other combos. And at 4K, the RTX 4070 was actually pretty close in the eGPU dock to when it was installed directly into my PC, with now a only small difference of 22%. While for the RTX 3060, that difference was only a tiny 3 FPS or 6%, while it's actually still playable with around 50 FPS in both cases, compared to the now only 14 FPS of the pure MSI Claw 8 AI+, Plus, which is of course not a 4K gaming handheld, even with this 7 year old game. And I also wanted to give you an overview of the average FPS over all games. 
At 1080p, the Pure Claw was able to achieve 38 FPS on average in my small batch of games, while with the RTX 3060 in the eGPU, it was already 60% faster on average with 61 FPS and 150% faster with the RTX 4070. At 1440p, these numbers improved a bit with an advantage of 83% for the RTX 3060 in the eGPU dock and 159% for the RTX 4070. And at 4K, the eGPU really starts to shine with a plus of 100% for the RTX 3060 when used in the eGPU dock and a vast improvement of 222% when I used the RTX 4070 in the eGPU with the MSI Claw. Again, it's still quite a bit slower as in a desktop PC, but it's most certainly a big improvement. So it's obvious that in general, we are losing quite a lot of performance due to the bottleneck by the Thunderbolt cable here, especially at the lower resolutions. The GPUs often don't fully utilize their TDP and actually hover around 100 to 120 watt only, though, it can make sense for certain games and settings at certain resolutions and from my experience the bottlenecks are quite uh, small in 3D rendering stuff like Blender or video editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro. So for a use case in which you want to use the MSI Claw as a desktop PC replacement once docked, it could make a lot of sense and could be worth a try. Again, if you're interested in this cheap EP GPU dock by Vikingu, make sure to check my AliExpress link in the description. Alright, and that's it for today's video. If you're using the MSI Claw 8 AI+, Plus, I hope this test helped you a bit in deciding whether or not to get this cheap eGPU dock for yourself. If you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.